In the last video, we studied how to build a structure called a word to vec. A word to vec describes words by looking at other words you find in its immediate context. These contexts give us an idea of what the word could mean. So for example, if you have a word and its context frequently includes words like garlic, sauteed, leaves, and so forth, you probably have a word that has to do with a leafy vegetable. In this video, we will look at how word to vec can describe not only the meaning of words, but similarities between words. So a word to vec is a series of vectors, of vectors that have between 50 and 300 features. So 50 is about the smallest you can go for them to work effectively, and 300 is probably the maximum you can go and still have gains. But if you do more than 300 features, the gain in performance is very small. So we have these vectors and the features are the context of the words. So you have a target word that you want to describe and then the words that frequently appear in the context of that word, like garlic, like sauteed, like leaves. If you do that, you will find, first of all, that you can describe a word by um, looking at the words that happen frequently in its context, but also that similar words will have very similar word to vec uh, vectors or feature values. So two words like cappuccino and espresso, uh, for example, are always gonna have similar contexts. They're always gonna be uh, accompanied by words like cup, hot, um, milk, almond, coffee shop, pumpkin spice, and so forth. Um, because the context of these two words are very similar, their word to vec values are also going to be very similar. So these two vectors are going to be closer together and are going to have more similarity. As a matter of fact, you can ask a word to vec for how similar two words are. So let's say we have um, one of our vectors, let's say, for example, it has 300 features like this. You have one for woman and you have one for man. And then you ask the computer to, uh, to calculate how similar these two vectors are. You could get a value that goes from zero to one. Um, zero would mean no similarity. These words have nothing to do with each other. And one would be perfect similarity. Similarity. These two words are virtually the same. Most typically, you're going to get values in the middle. So if you ask for the similarity between woman and man, you're going to get a value of 0 0.87 because uh, they're both human. They have many characteristics that they share. Words like Paris and train have few context words that they share. And so they're going to have a lower similarity, 0 0.25. Notice that this is the inverse of distance. The more similar words are, uh, two words are, the less distance there's going to be between them in this 300 dimensional space. So this is still similar to what we we're doing at the beginning of the week with features and calculating distances between features. It's just that this space is now 300 dimensional and we're going to call it similarity. If you have 300 dimensions, it's obviously impossible for us to look at distances in a 300 dimensional space. So we take these 300 dimensions and we squash them into two dimensions so that they become something we can understand with our human eyes. One way to do this is a TSNE chart. Essentially, if you have two words that are very similar in 500 dimensional space, I'm sorry, in 300 dimensional space, so that these two points are very close together, this TSNE chart is going to squash the 300 dimensions into two dimensions and is going to preserve as best as it can the distances between the words or more accurately, the probabilistic distribution of distances between the words. And as you can see here, 
it's going to show you the relationship between Paris and France, for example, in the lower left. It also has the relationship between London and England and Rome and Italy. And something very interesting is going to happen. The distance between Paris and France is going to be roughly equal to the distance between London and England, and also equal to the distance between Rome and Italy. Or, in the words of Wurtuvec, these are going to have roughly the same similarity between them. You can also calculate similarities between uh, pairs like dog and dogs, or cat and cat. And again, they're going to have roughly the same similarities. You can even do interesting things like calculate similarities between uh, the same root or stem with different morphemes. So slow, slower, slowest have roughly the same configuration as fast, faster, fastest, and long, longer, longest. As we mentioned with the capitals, um, with uh, Rome and Italy and London and England, the distances between these are going to be very similar. So we can calculate analogies using a word to vec. If two things, I'm sorry, if two words have very similar distances, it means that they are, um, e that the relationship is roughly the same. So for example, Beijing and China have a certain similarity and Lisbon and Portugal have a certain similarity. So Beijing is to China with, uh, in similarity as Lisbon is to Portugal in similarity. And the capitals are going to have roughly the same distance to their countries amongst all of them. This will, all, this will apply to many sets of words. For example, human words. Uh, so you can see here we have gendered pairs. Uh, we have words like niece and nephew towards the left, and they're gonna be they're gonna have the same similarity as other pairs like aunt and uncle, for example. This technique should work regardless of the input language. If we provide enough input, the computer will be able to calculate uh, word to vec vectors. So on the left, we have in an English example with numbers and with domesticated animals. And we have the same words for Spanish on the right. And as you can see, the spatial distributions are roughly the same, and but particularly the similarities between words are roughly the same between languages. One very interesting use of word to vex is that you can see how words change over time. So in all human languages, words change. Words change over different generations. And the word broadcast in the 1850s used to mean something like to broadcast seeds for cultivation. So that word was uh, had a lot of similarity with words like seeds, like sowing, like scatter. The word has changed over the last 150 years to where it now means broadcasting a digital signal or an electromagnetic signal. So now the word has more similarity with words like radio and television. And again, this similarity is because the word broadcast usually is accompanied in its context by words like television and radio in the present, whereas in the 1850s, the word broadcast usually had in its context words like seed and sow and scatter. In that way, you can track changes in meaning over time. So word to vec is a model of meaning for words. Finally, you can do something very interesting. You can perform vector arithmetic. Here we have four words, queen, king, woman, and man, and we could do the following operation. King minus man plus woman equals queen. So what are we going to do here? We're going to take the features of king, which include you know, authority, power, but also um, characteristics of man, like being a man. And we're going to subtract the characteristics of man out of the word king meaning that we're only going to have the characteristics of power and authority and so forth. 
This is a visual simplification of the problem, but it would look something like this. You have uh, the subtraction of these two vectors is the red vector, which would be roughly the characteristics of authority without the characteristics of man. Or more um, accurately, the context of the word king, which describes things related to authority, minus the context for the word man. If we sub, uh, take this vector and subtract, subtract this other one, we're going to get king, or values for the features of king, that have discounted the characteristics of this word. If we take that vector we had, which had the authority characteristics, and then we add woman to it, we would have a new vector that gives us the characteristics of authority plus the characteristics of woman. Or more accurately, the context of king that has to do with authority plus women and its contexts. This is going to be roughly equal to queen. And as we can see there, woman plus authority would equal queen in this system. It's one final very interesting characteristic of this is that indeed, vectors are going to have information about all of these changes. For example, binary gender, uh, man and woman, is going to be indicated by some vector, and uh, which is going to be the same vector that indicates the change between king and queen, for example. So that vector will encode that change, or that binary. There's going to be a different vector, this one, which encodes something like higher authority, going from man to king, from woman to queen, for example. In summary, a word to vec is a way to describe words using their context words as features. And they will give us an idea of the meanings of the words. But when we build this uh, feature system, we can also do many more things. We can find similar words because they have very similar word to vec vectors. We can find patterns of similarity. Um, if we have two vectors like Paris and uh, France, and two vectors like London and England, the similarity between these pairs is going to be roughly the same. And we can also perform vector arithmetic, so that we can take a word and remove some of its meaning characteristics and then add different meaning characteristics. In our next video, we're going to look at some problems in using word to vec um, Spoiler alert! Many biases can creep into the word to vec and create strange correlations in our features.